Hi everyone, my name is Mark Moyes from Big Mountain Studio, and today I'm going to teach you five different ways to create better backgrounds for your applications. But before I get into that, I want to teach you something about UI design, uh, something that can help you out in your future applications and doing design for your present applications. And the thing I want to teach you is that your user interface on your phone is a communication to your users. And that communication is your number one priority, is getting that communication across. So as you're designing and you're adding these background images, there's something I'm going to show you is that you can have too little design on one end and too much design on the other end. And think about it as a communication. So too little design and the user can lose interest in your application and maybe just uninstall it right after they see it. Too much design, which is might be like too much communication or an overwhelming communication that might include, you know, uh, animations flying all around the screen, bright colors flashing everywhere. That could also distract the user from the communication. So think about it like this. Think about a time when you had a really good conversation with someone. What was, what were some of the things that were present there? Maybe there's a, like a lot of interest that you had something in common with that person. And so you had a really good conversation. So you have to find something right in the middle that matches your user's level of communication. So let's go back to the other side. On this side, you have too little communication, or I'm sorry, on this side, you have too little design. And that could be someone whose communication is like more monotone and boring, and this is how they teach. So you lose interest right away. On this other side, this might be the person who's like, it's like, hey, how's it going? What are you doing? And his arms are flying, and you can't really follow what he's saying because you're too distracted by his arms and his facial movements, you know, a very like a visual talker. <laughs> Some people that's okay, but for some people it might be too distracting and they lose the communication. So remember, that's your number one priority is to maintain and enhance that communication. And you can lessen that communication by too little design where someone loses interest or too much design where it distracts someone or it overwhelms them and you lose the communication. So as for you as an artist, I'm gonna give you some tools, but it's up to you to find that right balance right in the center to perfectly communicate to your users through your user interface. Okay, so let's start with tip number one for a better backgrounds, and that is simply using an image blur. So when we look at this screen right here, we see that there's a nice picture behind it. So why would we wanna even change this screen? Well, think about what I said in the beginning, where all the way over on one side, it's possible to have too much design. And although this picture is very beautiful, it's rich in colors, and so it could distract the person from really what you want them to do. And here it's pretty simple for this example. All you need them to do is click a button and maybe notice your icon. This icon, by the way, will turn white when we run the application. It's just black right now. So what we want to do is we want to kind of tone down this image a little bit so they notice the, the UI more. Oh, one more note too is this image is created by Alina Olenek. And I got this image from thenounproject.com. It's a great resource to find inspiration for icons or to download icons if you're using them in your prototypes. You can include them in your application at no cost, but you need a place where you can say the icons are from this person. So you just basically have to give the person credit. Okay, so let's continue with the blur. Now, of course, the simplest thing you can do is just drag a blur control on here. And we just put it on like this. And there you go. And then we're going to drag this to the back. So it's right on top of the image. And there you go. So you have a blur. And now notice the effect here. Now you moved that scale that's all the way on one side where it's very where the design is very distracting and you've brought it back into the center again. So the person really notices what you're trying to communicate. Your buttons, your icons, the things that you really want them to see. Now the thing about this blur control in iOS is you can't control the amount of blur. So if you want to do that, then you'd have to bring it into your favorite e image editing program and apply the blur there. And you can tone it down and you can get it to the point where it's right in the middle of your scale. So it's not so blurry that no one can make out what it is and it just looks boring again. And it's not so colorful and distracting where they're going to be ignoring the user elements on the UI. Method number two. Now here we have a UI and 
you can see this picture is very nice and this picture is toned down a little bit so it's not so distracting as maybe the first screen that we were looking at but we want to tone it down a little bit more because it can still be distracting the person can be looking at over here looking at a person doing yoga and it's like wow it's a cool cliff I wonder where this is and right there you're taking the attention off of your screen and what they should be looking at or, or working with and they're looking at other things so basically it's kind of like interrupting your communication to the user so what can we do here well here's another way what you can do is let's click on this go to the background view and change the color so let's see let's let me start with a, a more noticeable color we'll go with this bright orange and here's the trick what you do is you come over to your alpha and as you start to turn it down you notice your image turns more and more orange basically what's happening is it's showing the color of the view that's behind it so as you turn down the alpha it's showing more and more orange and you can get it to a point you know where you feel comfortable where you're like okay this isn't so distracting anymore and now these controls really show up a lot better and then you, you know you can just play with it like okay here now it's pretty much a solid color and it's not distracting but you can start to add in a little bit more and get it to a point where you feel it is best there's no right answer here you have to apply your own creativity and find that that balance right in the middle okay good so that's one way and that's again that's basically all I did was give a color to the view and then change the alpha on the image so the color comes through okay step number three using a slight gradient here we have a menu and as you can see this menu is pretty boring it's just a gray color right well what if we added a, a gradient to it with some color what I'm going to do is I have custom classes in my project already and I basically call them the same thing as the class and just put an X behind it just so when I come here <laughs> I know that I'm looking for it you see it says UI view so I know I'm looking for a UI view X and I find it right here UI view X and there's my custom class and in this custom class it has ability to add a first color and a second color for your gradient so if you want to know how to do this I have a video on gradients and it will show you how to set up your a UI view that you can inherit from where you can give it a first color and a second color to create your gradient okay so let's create a gradient and I'm just gonna play around here maybe I'll start with a, the first color is white and for the second color I don't know let's try that orange again so you can do something like this it's kind of getting lost up here so maybe I want to go with like a black color instead there you go and that really brings out the white and this again this icon right here it'll be white when we run it so that's one idea is to create a nice gradient it's not distracting the user they can easily see all the icons and these these icons right here will be white too when I run the application so that's one way and maybe maybe you want to tone down that black a little bit and go with the dark gray eh so let's just come here we can, we can go here and just see what looks best this is what I like about using a gradient on the storyboard is you can change the colors in your UI to actively see at design time what it's going to look like okay that's one example I personally probably wouldn't go with these colors I just I don't have any like preset colors that are <laughs> that I can show you that might be better this might be a little bit better <laughs> okay but anyway the again the creativity is up to you there's no right answer and if you want you can even go with a radial gradient I have a radial gradient over here or you can you know have the gradient go from side to side like I can change it to a horizontal gradient if we wanted to so play around with it this is just one method okay tip number four tip number four is similar to tip number two except what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to overlay the image now here you see this image again is it's not so bad it might be a little bit distracting because that mountain looks pretty beautiful you know it's a very nice picture and also with this blur control here and the controls on the blur control this really helps bring out your controls so the user can really see them and interact with them and not get too distracted but what if you want to tone this down a little bit another way that you can do is add a UI view on top of the image there we go like that and let's move it so it's just right on top of the image and then what we can do is we can change the alpha 
And I'm going to change the background color to kind of like go with that that bluish color. Okay, let's try this right here. Yeah, there we go. So this this way it really tones down the image a little bit. So it really is more of a background image. It doesn't distract the user too much and it really brings out the focus on here. And play around with this. You know, you'll notice like as you're looking at the center center controls as I start to lower the opacity and make it go away, you can see the level of distraction. So just keep adjusting that alpha until you get to a point where you're like, oh, this is good. I like it right here. It's not too distracting, but they can still see the image and it enhances the communication. It really brings this out more. Okay, let's go on to tip number five. And tip number five, here we have a screen and you can see that this, again, it's, a, it's another picture that's meant to distract you for this example here that I'm giving. And when I run this, this text will be white at runtime, and it's very hard to read. So what we want to do is we want to tone down this, this image a little bit. And we can use some, you know the four methods that I showed you before, but I'm going to show you a fifth one. And the fifth one involves using an image editor of your choice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use Sketch. Okay, here we go. I've got that background image all set up. And... I'm going to overlay this image with another image uh, that has a texture to it. So let me show you what I mean. Now the first thing we want to do is we want to look for something that has a texture. And I want to show you two different ways to do this. One using Bing and another one using Google. So what we're going to do is go to images. And then I want you to search for something that says texture. You see it has texture, texture background. Let's try texture background. Okay, good. So we have a lot of different backgrounds with textures on it. But we're not going to use these as our primary background. We're going to use it to add texture to the existing image. So here's something else I want you to do too. When you're creating your application, you don't want to take anything that is copyrighted or that you can get in trouble with. So one of the things that you can do for Bing is you come over to this filter, and this last option here is called License. So you can click on here, and you can say All Creative Commons. It gives you, you know, full right to do anything you know you have public domain here free to share and use commercially so you have a lot of different options that you can choose from I'm going to go with the uh, free to share and use commercially then that way it's like there's no trouble at all with these and you can just find a texture that you like so here we have let's see let's take another look at our image okay it's kind of green with a white sky the colors don't really matter either because we can always change these colors but let's let's go with this wallpaper right here. So I'm going to save this. I'll just put it on my desktop and I'll call it uh, texture. Okay, save that. Oh, and before we continue using this, let me also show you what you do in Google. So again, we'll look for a textured background or textured. I'll just go with textured paper. So you see something a little bit different. Now let's go with images. Okay, great. And then what you want to do is come over to tools and go to usage rights. And these are a little bit different from the, the way Bing describes them. But the one that you'll be safe with is, is you can say labeled for reuse with modification. That means that you can use it. Like labeled for re reuse means that you can use it, but it has, you have to maintain the image. You can't modify it. What you want is labeled for reuse with modification. Yeah, then you can just search for you know any kind of texture that you want. Okay, let's go back to our uh, sketch and get let's get that image in there. So I'm just going to minimize this here. Yeah, there we go. Let's put that on top of there. Whoops, I had the <laughs> had the wrong artboard selected. Let me select this artboard. All right, let's put that in there. All right, good. Okay, it's okay. So we're just going to take this and we're going to make sure it just covers it. And then from here. What I'm going to do is adjust the opacity so it gives it some texture and it kind of covers it up. What we can also do too is, is change the color by going right here, adjust color. And again, this is this is how you do it in Sketch. Your, your own image editing application might be a little bit different. So I'm going to, you know, play around with like the contrast where we can make it darker, make it or make it lighter. To kind of like tone it down a little bit, the saturation is also good. We can make it less colorful. So maybe something like that, right? 
And also, I'm going to make it a little bit darker because our text is white. So let's take the brightness and turn that down a little bit. Yeah, there we go. We'll just go with something like that. Okay, so I'm going to take this, export it, default. I'll just call this BG for background. Okay, so we're back in Xcode, and I've dragged the image into my assets catalog here. And I just called it BG. So now if we go back to, let's see how that looks on our help screen. Click on the image and I want to change it to BG. And there we go. This doesn't look too good. I don't think I'm, I'm totally satisfied with that. But I just want to kind of give you an example of, like, like this could be a little bit darker, right? So we can actually just use that, uh, one of the techniques that I used before. Give it a black background just like that it's already set to black and then i can just uh start decreasing the alpha and make it a little bit darker so you could go with something like that now it's just not it's not just an image but you also have texture to it too so it makes it a little bit more interesting but it doesn't totally take away from what you're trying to communicate here it gives your your application its own unique look all right guys i hope you enjoyed these tips i've only given you five but as you can see there are probably countless ways you can create nice backgrounds for your application and you guys are smart and you're creative and so what you can do is share your tips if you have some other tips that you'd like to share put them down in the comments below i'd love to read them and i'm sure the other viewers would love to read them too another thing you can do too is if you've applied some of these tips i'd love to see what you're working on and how you've used these tips to create better backgrounds for your application so what you can do is follow me on twitter and post images and tag me in it at Big Mountain Studio. And then that way too, if you follow me on Twitter, you can also see some of the other projects that I'm working on too. I'm part of a daily UI challenge where five days a week, I'm posting a new project to Twitter. Well, I try to post it every day, but sometimes I get a little bit behind, but I do make it up every week on the weekends. So then you can see what I'm working on, I can see what you're working on, and we can give each other feedback too. I'm always willing to listen to your ideas and your opinions to make something better. All right, guys, thank you very much. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you think any of your friends would like to know this information that you learned today, then go ahead and share with them down below. And consider subscribing because I keep coming out with more fun tutorials like this. I'm really interested in UI and user experience. So most of my videos will most likely be around user experience and user interface and how to improve those. All right, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.